Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffrey Bershaw from Avanti Destinations, and this is our webinar, Discover the Best of Peru. I've got um, Lee Young, our lead travel consultant for uh, Central and South America, as well as Michael Field, our product manager for um, Central and South America. And then we have uh, Jimena Barria from our local uh, partner down in Lima. So she's live from Lima today. So we've got somebody uh, right there uh, in the heart of it, uh, who will uh, you know also answer some of your questions uh, at the end as we go through this presentation. Uh, but quickly, uh, just to for those of you who aren't very familiar with uh, Peru, uh, most people recognize the iconic Machu Picchu up there on the top uh, left. Uh, some of the Inca ruins. Uh, we'll cover some of that today as we go through this presentation, uh, and then the wonderful food of Peru. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic, uh, wonderful fusion dishes as well. Uh, and then we then the bottom right is Cusco. Uh, and we're going to cover all these major uh, things today. Uh, but first, for those of you who aren't very familiar with Avanti Destinations, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Uh, we are your one-stop travel source. Uh, this is a wonderful picture here of, uh, of Lima uh, down in the, in, the, in the old town. Uh, but, you know, we offer air... Uh, transfers. We'll talk a little bit as far as uh, a couple of rail options uh, that your clients have uh, while they're traveling in Peru. Lots of tours and sightseeing, the accommodations. We're not going to cover accommodations so much today. We're going to focus more on getting your clients from point A to point B and what there is to see and do uh, while they're traveling through uh, Peru. Uh, we do some small ship cruises in Peru. It's more of the, you know, the river cruises in the Amazonas. Uh, there are pre and post cruise pack packages, uh, and, and of course you you can add a TA fee, and we also offer travel protection. Uh, the great thing about travel protection is, is that uh, once your client's booking is paid in full, you have 100% uh, commission protection, and as long as you, your clients play, pay the premium uh, seven days, within seven days of deposit, uh, then they have canceled for any reason, so two, two good reasons to use our uh, travel protection. Um, so, getting into the destinations themselves, uh, we're going to be starting off in, uh, in, in uh, Lima. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of extensions from Lima uh, during that time, and then getting to the, the main destinations that most people are, fo are focused on, uh, Cusco, Sacred Valley, and then uh, Machu Picchu and Agos Calientes, or Machu Picchu Town, uh, and then Lake Titicaca. So, Lima and, and Nazca are connected in many ways. Uh, and we're just going to jump right into Peru, Peru. So, um, you know, as you can see here, wonderful map. Uh, you know, the, there's a, a nice little uh, a paragraph on, on uh, you know, the amazingness of, of Peru. But, um, you know, I think one of the things I'm thinking of is getting from the, des you know, getting from the U.S. or North America uh, to Peru. Um, you know, you're able to, Lee, you were able to provide flights from pretty much anywhere. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And right. how long typically is, are the flights? Well, uh, depending on where you're connecting from, obviously, within the U.S., but if you're coming from the West Coast here, we're based out of Portland, Oregon, and a lot of people in the West will fly out of L.A. specifically. That's about an 11-hour uh, flight yeah. to get from L.A. to Lima. Yeah. Uh, we use LATAM a lot, but we also have other air contracts and very good deals, especially for that business class air as well, yeah. something that we offer. From the East Coast, from Miami as a hub, JFK as well, um, there are a lot of ways and routes to get to Peru, and it's yeah. actually a pretty easy flight most of the time. Um, you know, it, you can land. A lot of people tend to stay at the Lima airport for a, a night in Milan. Exactly. But we also want to highlight the importance of staying in Lima yeah. and what you can do there. I know Hamed is going to have a lot to say yeah, about well. what Lima has to offer, as that is her yeah. home. <laughs> yes, yes. So we'll cover Lima a little bit more in depth, uh, and uh, everybody will uh, let you know all the great things uh, about Lima. Uh, but really, the location is important. And um, you know, Amena, you're in you're in uh, Lima itself. Um, yeah. Hello. Uh, Hi, everybody from sunny Lima. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, Peru, as you can see in this map, is located 
in the heart in the middle of South America. So it's a hub for many airlines today that go off to Chile, Argentina, and Brazil. So coming to Lima is very, very easy from the U.S. There are other flights that go through Central America, but typically from Miami and from New York and from L.A., there's Atlanta and um, Houston. And there's direct flights to Lima every single day, even twice a day, each airline. So it's fairly easy to oh, get yeah. here. And it's fairly easy to go from one country to the other within South America. There's very good connection from Peru to Chile or Argentina or Brazil, everywhere. So it's yeah. it's a good location. And, and, and Lee, you know, you get you talk to travel agents, you know, day in, day out. And, you know, what are the combinations that you would recommend for Peru that are easy to get to as far as other countries? Because, you know, you've got Ecuador up here. Mm -hmm. And then Bolivia and, and Chile, uh, you know, and, and then, of course, uh, Brazil. But, you know, connecting the dots is, is pretty easy to do. It's easy to get to Santiago, particularly on the TAM airlines. Um, it's a little, there aren't as many flights from Lima to Quito or Guayaquil on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Buenos Aires, it's easy to connect. Easy to get to. Uh -huh. yeah. And once, uh, or several times a week, there are direct flights on LATAM from Lima to uh, um, Iguazu, but that is on the yeah, Brazil, Brazil side, side, so you yeah. have to have a, a visa. Clients have to have a visa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another area that has become kind of a trendy destination right now, as we speak, is Colombia. And there mm -hmm. are some new flights that connect Bogota and Lima, so you can do some True. stopovers as well. That's another good option. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We're starting to hate in Bogota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Actually, there's flights now, uh, Michael, that go from Lima to Cartagena direct, and there's flights from Bogota to Cusco direct. So mm -hmm. you can do both countries at a time. And Lima to Panama City to connect, uh, you know, Central America on Copa. So wow, very yeah. well situated. Yeah. Anything you want to add on that? No, well, when it comes to Peru, you know, we're going to highlight that country in particular today. But uh, a lot of people for the first trip to South America, as, as Lee very well knows, and Amanda too, like to combine Peru with a few other countries. That Machu Picchu, Galapagos combination is very common. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we in a perfect world, could you do two separate trips? Absolutely. That's not how we'd like to. But... As time for Americans, we like to stuff as much as we possibly can into <laughs> you know, a tender and <laughs> uh, so, so that's what I, uh, we, we tend to get that request a lot. And uh, you know, one, of, one of the keys to it is, is figuring out that ship to the Galapagos. And that's where we're, our expertise is very useful for you as a travel agent because it's complicated trying to combine those two places, mm -hmm. matching between the chains and getting to Machu Picchu and then the right departure day and availability on the Galapagos uh, ship. It's not an easy thing to do, so just yeah. let us know if you have any of those combinations and, and we'll time it right for you and, and do our best to make it work um, based on the schedule that's available. Yeah. In terms of connecting, uh, when you arrive into Lima and you're connecting to uh, Cusco and Machu Picchu, um, so many times I hear the client only has four or five nights and they want to rush through Peru. Well, if something goes wrong with the flight coming in from the United States, if it's delayed and you've only allowed yourself, you know, three three days to see Cusco and Machu Picchu, uh, it's possible with a flight delay that you could miss the most important part of your trip, which is Machu Picchu, because you, you pre-impose. You don't yeah. go straight to Machu Picchu. Yeah. So... You know, we'll talk a little bit about that yeah. a little bit later on, but the, you know, I think the, the interesting thing about this slide here is the, you know, the the, uh, the millennial history meaning that there's you know thousands of years worth of history, uh, but that mm -hmm. history is still alive, alive. today. Mm -hmm. And talking about the, the living culture uh, of of Peru, uh, you know, I think that you know in, the, in Lima it's probably not as evident, but as soon as you get out of Lima, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes well, yeah, it becomes way down. more way more mm -hmm. evident. Every time that, that I come back from Peru, I always have kind of the same feeling about the people and how vibrant the culture is and their connection to the Inca past, but also the pre-Inca past as well. Mm -hmm. There is this kind of innate link to the past that Peruvians have that is 
pretty rare. And yes, in Lima, it's a financial center, this business district. So, you know, it's it's not as um, you know obvious once you get to Cusco and Sacred Valley and up to Aguas Calientes. All the markets, the textiles, the weaving that they still do. They still do a lot of the dyeing. The same. They have all these traditional techniques that they've uh, linked them to the past, and that connection. It, it, it's very vibrant and you feel it as, as you're there. And when you come home, oftentimes you think of that and the people more than anything else what you're going to see. Um, and, and that is connected to the ruins as well. Mm -hmm. You're going to, Jimena, you can talk a little bit about kind of the, the living culture and the pre-Columbian museums that exist in Lima as well and how the Peruvian people feel about their past. Yeah, well, we're obviously very connected to the past. Um, in Lima, as you mentioned, it's not that evident um, because it's more of the financial um, district in, in the country. But just um, the museums in Lima are amazing introduction to what Peruvian culture is. And going into Cusco or the Sacred Valley with a previous knowledge on what you're going to see, um, learned in Lima and heard by Limeños who share the story, I think is very important. I think we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about things that can be done in Lima, but for a fact, um, definitely the, the, the culture is very, is very vibrant, as, as you mentioned, Michael. Very much one, one of the ways that you see that is uh, how they've been able to maintain the Quechua language. You know, a lot of local communities don't even speak Spanish, to be honest. There's, there's a lot of locals. Uh, I did the Inca Trail last September, and uh, you know, a bunch of the guys, their Spanish was, was not so great, but their their Quechua. <laughs> well, Quechua goes all the way up into uh, okay. into Ecuador. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, nature and biodiversity. There's a. I mean, you know, we talk a little bit with regard, or you know, a lot of people know about. You know, there, there is Amazonas region uh, in Peru as well as Ecuador and Bolivia and Brazil uh, and Colombia. But, um, you know, the, the biodiversity even outside of that is, is pretty amazing, the different landscapes uh, that people experience. Like just yeah, people don't know. Go ahead. S sorry to cut you. Um, people don't know, but the <laughs> Amazon region in Peru is the largest region out of our three main regions, which are the coast, the Andes, and the jungle, or the Amazonas. Um, so we have a pretty big portion of our land that is um, that is the Amazon. So there is tons of things to discover easily from from the Amazon just on a 30-minute flight from Cusco. So it's very easy to get to one place to the other and see a number of different things within one trip. Now, we're not going to focus too much on the Amazon today, but just to let all you guys know, there are really two places, hubs for the Amazon in Peru. You have Puerto Maldonado, which, as Jimena mentioned, is just a short 30-minute flight from Cusco, and then you have Iquitos as well, uh, which is the northern Amazon area. And that is where a lot of the small ships are, mm -hmm. and, and we do some cruising, the Delphines. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful option in general. The Peruvian Amazon, not, not that you can call the Amazon anywhere luxury, but the lodges that are offered in Peru are head and shoulders above most other lodges that are available in Brazil. So if you're looking to access nature in comfort and in style, then Peru is a good option for you, especially as an extension for those people coming in and seeing Machu Picchu for the first time. Well, you have jungle, you got the, you know, the, the beginning of the Alto Plano, um, you know, you're high up and almost desert-like in some places. Um, and then, you know, Lake Titicaca is its own, <laughs> its own yeah. ecosystem in itself. And then you have lots of microclimates throughout. And the headwaters of the Amazon are in Peru. That's true. That's true. And then the uh, all of our, we all smile as yeah. soon as we <laughs> see this. <laughs> Getting hungry already. <laughs> the but, the yeah, but the uh, yeah, ceviche is, is amazing. Uh, but just the food overall, uh, there's a lot of pride that people take in, in the food that they prepare for, for folks. And there's a lot of great food to be had. So one of your faves besides the ceviche, Lee? Well, many forms of potatoes. Yes. How many, <laughs> how many potatoes? 
30,000. Wow. 30,000. Incredible. Wow. Well, my favorite potato dish I tell you is the calza, which yeah, is kind of a, a cold yeah. potato pie, if you want to call right. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it's incredible. I'm unfortunate to have a friend out here in Portland from <laughs> Peru who makes it for me often. And so I'm very grateful I get to eat that about once a month or so. Well, you know, the interesting thing about the variety of potatoes, actually there's a variety of a lot of different types of staples corn, corn, that we have. And the reason corn. being is that the Inca would create microclimates yeah. because they had the staple diet, but you've got a, you know, such a diversity of, of uh, landscapes and, and, uh, and, and weather uh, that, you know, you, you have to find out which potato is going to grow in this region. Yeah. Their understanding of agricultural techniques that we use to this day, these traditional techniques that are based on those microclimates, and you see that in a bunch of the different ruins, but mm -hmm. you know, especially Machu Picchu, you see these yeah. levels, and there's a reason they do it, because that's why there's so many different potato species, because different colored potatoes will grow on different levels of altitude, yeah. um, and it's, it's really amazing how they've been able to use all those colorful vegetables to create these unique dishes today. And uh, you know, one of the things about the gastronomy in Peru is especially the colors, the sauces, the vegetables, it pops out at you, all the plates that you have. So you are kind of eating with your eyes a little bit before you're eating with your mouth, which is great. In Lima, you have all the seafood. Yeah, you have a lot of seafood there. Yeah. And uh, Jimena, uh, just maybe talk a little bit about the variety or the, the fusion of the, of the different uh, cultures, not only within Peru, but also the influence worldwide on Peruvian cuisine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a lot of Chinese influence in the food that we eat. I don't know if you, one of you tried the chifa down here in Lima. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a lot of Italian influence um, in Peruvian food. So we definitely, like Michael say, we pride on our food everywhere you go. I'm sure people wanted you to try different things, which is a very unique thing about our culture. Um, especially in Lima, people um, eat a lot of seafood. We have the the, 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 the water um, right in Lima, fresh fish, um, ceviche is the most traditional dish that we, we eat, and even outside of Lima and the Andes, the food is, is absolutely amazing. So definitely, um, if there's nothing else, there's a lot of things to do in Lima, but if you like to eat, there's it's a must. You have to be in Lima just trying different things. All you have to do is, you know, check out some of the travel documentaries, whether it's Anthony Bourdain or The Chef's Table on Netflix about uh, Gaston, oh, I always forget Gaston's last name, yeah. but he has a wonderful restaurant in Cusco and in Lima as well, um, and, uh, you know, with the, the techniques that they use um, are, are really kind of based out of this traditional uh, Incan civilization, and then from there they've been fused in with, again, the Chinese and the Italians and all yeah. uh, the current culture as well. That's yeah. created yeah. something really unique. Uh, and African as well. And African as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. African spices. Absolutely. Uh, Talking about fulfilling experiences more on the on the cultural side, uh, this image here is from uh, Miss Mana, um, and it's one of the options that we're able to provide uh, to you, to your clients uh, traveling to the the Sacred Valley. Um, and you know, just talking about the, maybe overall, the what are the the major things that we're focused on is in being able to provide travel agents and their clients and yeah. cultural experiences. Well, it, it can't be understated how proud we are to participate in this uh, Miss Manai community and to yeah. bring people out there, um, what they've been able to do to maintain their traditional way of living. Again, on, on the right there of your screen, you're going to see uh, a, a lady who um, kind of presents you to their culture as you arrive. She's a, a weaver, and uh, you're going to see some of the dyeing that they do as well. Now, once uh, at the Miss Manai community, all three of us here have been fortunate enough to participate uh, in this experience and, and coming home. We, we do want to provide these authentic, fulfilling experiences as much as possible. This is not a cliche luau that you do. You, you come away from it feeling as if this is the way that they're living. They're, they're not putting on a show for you. Um, and really, that's what we're trying to offer here. And that's a, a goal of Avanti, and, and our local suppliers done a great job uh, helping to support 
this community by bringing people in, teaching outsiders about how they used to live. And for all of us, um, the experience, once you arrive and they take you on to the potato farm and you put on the local traditional garb and you're uh, you know, out there planting potatoes and you're drinking chicha, the which chicha. is exactly, which is uh, fermented uh, corn. Chicha de hada, which is exactly fermented corn. Um, <laughs> the the experience, although the chicha may not be all that delicious out it's there, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. You know what? The, if if I ever taste it, uh, or the next time I taste it, I'll certainly have a nostalgic experience, <laughs> taking me back to this place where, um, you know, I felt connected to the people, and, and it really was powerful. So. You know, Jimena, thank you guys for, for finding yeah. uh, this community, for helping provide some support to it, and, and we're happy to be a part of that. To yeah. explain where uh, Ms. Manai is, uh, it's in the Sacred Valley. After you've flown to Cusco, and you're, you may be staying in the Sacred Valley, that's where uh, this is one of the optional tours that we offer from Cusco and the Sacred Valley. Valley. So we've left Lima behind and we've moved, yeah. you know. Well, we're, we're just talking about cultural yeah. experiences mm -hmm. overall. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, there's, you know, you have options within Lima uh, as well as uh, any of the destinations. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you guys, you know, you've worked on developing, you know, uh, cooking at somebody's house, you know, oh, yeah. uh, you know, um, um, and I think there's even some market visits in, the, in there and stuff. So, you know, you, you've really worked hard with uh, Jimena and, and, and their team to really develop some, some cool options. Yeah, well, Absolutely. Peru doesn't make it difficult because there are so many of those options to offer. And, uh, you know, in, that, in thinking about that, um, you know, Jimena, maybe talk a little bit about what there is to do, in, you know, culturally in, in um, you know, Lake Titicaca and, and Cusco. Hello? It sounds like we might have lost her. I, uh, I, I'm back. I'm back. You lost, you lost oh, okay. me for a sec, but I'm back. Something happened. Yeah. <laughs> can, can, you, can you ask the question again? I'm sorry about that. You lost me for a oh, sec. Oh, no. It's all right. We were just talking about some of the, you know, there's, there's a lot of cultural options that, uh, you know, you, you and uh, your team and, and Michael and, and Lee have worked on to develop uh, that we're able to provide. And maybe some of the highlights of, uh, of what you, you all have done, like in Cusco and Lake Titicaca. Okay, we're just going to keep on going here. No, but beyond Cusco, as, as you're describing here, there are other options for those kind of fulfilling authentic experiences. And Lake Titicaca is a very good example. We'll talk about Puno in the future, but it's yeah. not really about Puno. It's just about you know visiting the islands there. They have these reed islands, and, and you have communities who, they, they do have generators, but they're certainly not uh, living in 2017 like we do. And so you get a step back in time, and, and that's also a wonderful cultural experience. Yeah, and you have Tequila Island. We'll get to we'll get to that later on. Uh, so you know, uh, the Peru is a hotspot destination. Uh, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier today as far as the weather is concerned. There, you know, um, Peru is having some uh, unusual weather patterns. Semena was saying how hot it it's been re uh, re um, recently in in Lima, uh, but you're also hearing things in the news I mean, in the north with all the heavy rains, uh, but. You know, it is important to note that everything, the, the, all the major destinations that we're providing uh, are still, you know, it's business as usual. Things are, you know, maybe a little bit rainier, uh, but it's, you know, everything's running smoothly. The infrastructure is still there. Yeah, the uh, most, sorry, sorry to interrupt, I'm back, something happened with internet, apologies, but um, the most important thing to know about the floodings that are happening in Peru right now is that um, we are experiencing um, heavy rain in the north of the country, so some of the rivers that bring water down to the coast have been very heavy and have flooded some towns, but this has happened in the north of Peru. So that means that everything happening in Cusco, in Machu Picchu, in the Sacred Valley, and in the jungle is operating normally. There's um, some things, small things going on in, in Lima outside of, of the main center 
there where the hotels are and the most touristic activity. Um, today our day is as normal as ever. Obviously, Limeños trying to um, go out of Lima into the northern part of the country to help out with the floodings and stuff like that. But really, um, in the city and in Cusco, there is nothing going on. We haven't canceled any tours, any programs whatsoever. And of course, we try to encourage um, all of the people that are ambassadors from Peru, like Michael, Lee, and Jeffrey, and Avanti themselves, um, helping us sell the destination without um, any fright that things are going on in the touristic area so that nothing um, so that the economy is not impacted in, in 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 places where nothing's really going on so so that's basically what it is right now good good uh, so you know you guys have got I mean, you have a fair amount of, of, of new properties and it is a challenge especially as you get closer in uh, as far as inventory is concerned um, but you know I think overall would you agree that Peru is a great value yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, if you're relative to uh, the rest of, of South America, you know, for, for what you get in terms of the infrastructure that exists, uh, the a hotel stay, you know, going out to a restaurant is relatively inexpensive. Cusco, you know, food can be a little bit more expensive. Obviously, getting up to Aguas Calientes, it's like going to, um, you know, a, a a stadium where you're going to go watch sports. You're there. They know you're there. They know they can charge you a little bit more. But in general, it, it is a reasonably priced destination overall. Yeah. And the, you know, we talk about the people already, and I think that that's really what makes the the destination such a, a memorable experience. And one thing about that value-based pricing is we are going to talk a little bit about some extra offers that we have, including some. A free entrance to Machu Picchu a little later on as well, which is which is a great uh, uh, reason to incentivize your clients to, to book Peru right away. That's right, and uh, a great incentive is for them to spend some time in Lima, because okay. Lima is a freaking cool city. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, so you know maybe that's some of the challenges that you face sometimes in, in speaking with people. They just want to get out of Lima and get to Cusco as but quickly as possible. Big, big ugly city. Yeah, but it just changed. Yeah, you know, in all the years, I've yeah. been selling it. Yeah. So what was, you you came back recently, and and you were you didn't you go inspect the B Hotel in the yeah. Bronco oh, area? Yeah. yeah. The Bronco yeah. area is a, yeah. a really cool district. Um, Lima is uh, is a city of districts. The districts that we have hotels are San Isidro and Miraflores and Bronco, yeah. and you know those are, are very desirable parts of the city. It's a good, good hotel. Yep. And one thing about our hotels, we have electronic inventory, and uh, so we know, you know, when when you call, that we have availability. Live inventory. Live, live inventory. Yeah, yeah right, which right. has been a wonderful technology mm -hmm. for all of us, and our local partners do have a lot of allocation, so we're able to access. A lot of availability, mm -hmm. and uh, this is something maybe if you've used us for a long time. Um, the experience in the past never fun to you know get that call back that something's unavailable, which does happen during very busy season on occasion. Well, now that we have live availability, we can see it right away and say, hey, you put down deposit right now. This is available. There you go. So it's it's a good reason to to get that deposit and and incentivize the passengers to take yeah. it from a quote into a booking right away. Yeah. We have three, four, five star hotels. I think. That you know, the thing that always st that struck me is with regard to Lima is that you know, it, with those individual districts, you know, you could just hang out in one district for the day, and there's mm -hmm. plenty to see mm -hmm. and do and to eat. Absolutely. So you know, I I, I always I, I did not expect to love Lima as much as I did, and I think it's one of my favorite South American cities mm -hmm. by far. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really a cool city. I definitely think one of the most underrated cities in mm -hmm. in the world. Honestly, you know, the, the perception about Lima is kind of big ugly city, but the development beyond Miraflores, the San Isidro and Barranco, mm -hmm. these, these areas are, are very kind of trending, hip places where you can do a lot more than just maybe see a museum here and there, just walking around. They have a lot of wonderful shops there and incredible restaurants, as, as we've already been talking about, gastronomy. So, yeah, uh, and one what, thing what, what, is that there's two sides of Lima, which are pretty well showed in this picture. 
because um, there's the area that has all the colonial buildings, which are heavily interesting, and um, there's a pretty big area with buildings in this sort, and the cathedral, and the catacombs, and a number of things to do. But there's also a very neat side of it, where you can eat your ceviche overlooking the water, and that's um, the picture here, which is Miraflores. Um, the city is right next to the water, and um, it's, it can, it's, it's quite modern in some areas, so, so it's very enjoyable. Yep, I couldn't have said it better. So the, the capital of Peru is obviously Lima. Uh, we're looking at it here. Um, and, you know, there is a, a fair amount of, of museums as well in, in Lima. Uh, what are the major ones, Jimena? The um, most important museum right now is the Larquio Museum. It's one of the biggest um, pre-Columbian art museum in the world, actually. It's pretty nice. And the, the, the Larquio Museum is a great, like I was mentioning, it's a great introduction to pre-Incan and Incan culture. So just before going into the Secret Valley and Machu Picchu and listening to all these wonderful things about construction and about rituals and worships and stuff like that, it's definitely great to have a good background and going to the museum is amazing and it's got a very nice cafe and it's definitely one of the best rated museums in South America. Now there is a number of other museums as well. I recently um, enjoyed a few of them with Lee um, down in, in, in Barranco. Um, there's, there's smaller museums in, in, in old buildings um, that are more modern as well. We have the picture here is the Mali Museum, which is the Museum of Art of Lima, which have, has just been refurbished as well. It's very close to the colonial area, so it's got easy access. Um, it's wonderful, wonderful colonial art um, that we definitely recommend people to see. There's at least 10 museums that are totally worth it, so people can choose from them, and, and the Larco Museum is definitely the must, but depending on everybody's, I guess, um, preferences, they can choose from, from a number of things, even even photography. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, food. We can't forget food. There's so much good food there. Uh, but anyway, be that as it may, we're going to move uh, into the uh, Cusco region um, and, you know, um, maybe talking a little bit about getting people's clients from Lima to Cusco uh, would be really important. Yeah, well, there, there's lots of flights throughout the day, so uh, Way. tourists, international tourists, are going to Cusco at some point to get their work their way up to the Sacred Valley to Machu Picchu. Uh, but it's about an hour, about a 50-minute, hour-long flight from Lima to Cusco, maybe over an hour, depending on occasion. Um, and there are, I don't know, maybe 20 per day, something like that, a little more than that even, actually. Yeah. Um, it's Plenty very easy to connect the two. What often we choose to do is have people acclimate in the Sacred Valley, so they fly from Lima to Cusco, and they take about an hour and a half transfer to uh, the area yeah. called Urubamba. Yeah. And Urubamba, that's kind of the heart of the Sacred Valley where most of the hotels yeah. are located. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about the Sacred Valley yeah. in just a little bit, but yeah. that's uh, kind of the route that most yeah. people take. The reason I think, you know, going, talking about bringing Cusco up front is that it's, you know, we're talking about a region. Mm -hmm. rather than just the city itself. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about what our recommendations are for getting your clients to Machu Picchu, and Michael just alluded to that to a bit. But um, it's a, a large, popular region uh, for folks to go visit. And, you know, in the, you know it's the heart of the, of the Inca Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you're really stepping back into the past when you, you know, visit Cusco. Yeah, it's true. Just you're immersed in the culture. history. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the and the yeah. colonial ruins on or not ruins, mm -hmm. colonial buildings on top of the Inca ruins. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole city is you know, old town is is, is that way. I love Cusco. Yeah, it's a cool town. Yeah, it's, it's a city. It's a city. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Michael uh, talked a little bit about um, you know how we're going to go into the Sacred Valley, and we'll do that in just a minute. But uh, as the capital of the Inca Empire, uh, where's the site here, uh, Jimena? That's actually Sacsayhuaman, 
or a sexy yeah. woman, like some people like to call it in the States. Um, <laughs> it's just outside Cusco City. Just being in Cusco, there's a lot of things that one can do. One of the main things is just um, walking around the main square and doing the actual city tour, which includes the cathedral, the Coricancha Temple, and a number of other um, museums, if you may. And then just outside is this big fortress that used to protect the city from from, I guess, invaders um, at that time, and it's Sacsayhua Man, it's pretty impressive, it's just outside, 20 minute um, drive, and it's included in in, <coughs> in the, the regular tour, so so it's yeah. quite neat. Yeah. Actually, there's tons of things to do around Cusco today, there's new things that, you know, are, are, are put together for people to do. I think the picture um, that you were showing before showed uh, the Rainbow Mountain, which is something that's very popular yeah. today. Um, mm -hmm. the, Rainbow, the Rainbow Mountain has been very popular because it's a worship place um, where for many centuries people go to pay um, ceremony to Mother Earth. And it's actually, um, this mountain is called the Vinicuca Mountain in Spanish, and it's part of a very important mountain range, which is the Vicanota Mountain Range. And before, if you wanted to visit this area and, you know, do this traditional um, payment to Mother Earth and all that, you would have to walk for five days to get there um, and camp in different places. Of course, you can still do that. But today there's a new option, there's new roads that allow you to do a full day trek out of Cusco here, so every day we, 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 you can go and it takes around 10 hours and there's beautiful landscape, it's a small trek in case um, someone doesn't want to hike for a number of days and camp, at least at 4 a.m. in the morning though. Um, but you see great potato fields, um, vicuñas, the Andean cat um, fauna, and a number of things. It's actually 15 kilometers, and, and then you're driven back in car. So it's a neat experience, it's and it's something that's America. very popular. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and then it's gotten into some of the, the details of, of this option that has become a bit more popular. There was a New York Times article about it, so we get more requests. And because the new road was built, that allows you to access it without a five-day hike, there is definitely more demand for it. However, there are lots of options from Cusco, yeah. whether it's cultural, whether it's ruins, um, you know, whether it's food-based. So from Cusco, we have uh, you know a market visit and a home-hosted cooking option. We have a Pisco lesson option. Of course, there's just the City and Ruins tour um, where you're going to go around the Plaza de Armas in the mm -hmm. city, Cordy Museum. Mm -hmm. And then right above the city, there's a variety of different uh, uh, ruins, specifically Sacsayhuaman. What, what I love is because Jimena brought up you know, Sacsayhuaman being a fortress. What I love about Peru is the mystery behind it. You know, there's all this debate as to you know, why certain things were built and nobody really knows the answer and everybody's still studying it and, and you get so many opinions out there of sure. why things exist. It's and, diverse. And, exactly, and it's wonderful. From Sex and Walmart, which is above the city, they have these tunnels that go all the way down to Coricancha, to the museum in the city. They used to allow some people in there, but uh, I guess, uh, I don't know how many years back, some, somebody got lost and uh, <laughs> never came out, and so they closed off this tunnel for, for the tourists to visit. Um, but either way, it's just an exemplary, it. exactly. It's just an example of, yeah. of all the different things we have to offer, not to mention um, all the adventure options they have. You have rafting, which which I happened to do the last time I was there, the short cultural yeah. hike, hike and rafting uh, on the Urubamba River. This is the, the river that goes all the way from the Sacred Valley um, up to Aguas Calientes. You see it from uh, Machu Picchu. You see it down below. That's one mm -hmm. option. There's mountain biking, a whole bunch of different hiking options as well. So talking about the, the Sacred Valley, then the next slide is a map, just so you know. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about getting their clients around and getting to Machu Picchu. Uh, but you know, one of our main focuses uh, is to you know, get people into the Sacred Valley. Uh, it's the lowest, lowest part of that region, mm -hmm. uh, getting them there for a couple of nights, preferably two nights, mm -hmm. uh, and before they go to Machu Picchu to get acclimated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not spending you know, two or three nights in Cusco, because at that point in time for this whole region, you're as high up as you're going to get. Mm -hmm. so, 
Uh, Mimi talk the big draws of uh, the Sacred Valley besides the Urubamba River and river rafting? Well, it's a very tranquil area. Yeah. It, it's very agricultural. Yeah. Uh, it's just a beautiful area. And we have such beautiful hotels. There's some great you know, properties great hotels there. And, the, yeah. and, it, and you're closer to Machu Picchu when uh, you get on the train. Yeah. You don't have to get up so early. <laughs> You still have to get up early. Well, though. you do, you do <laughs> but not as early as, as departing from. Correct, Pico. correct, and we and we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a minute, as far as the slide, and some people want to take the Air Bingham from uh, Peroria Station. Uh, but and there are lots of tours from the Sacred Valley. Yeah, there are. It's a great place to yeah. you know the cultural tours that we're providing, action. even from Cusco mm -hmm. that we've already mm -hmm. talked about, right. are easier and to get mm -hmm. to. Less time if you're in the Sacred Valley. Yeah. So horseback riding, mountain biking, Maras and Maras. the beginning of the Inca uh, mm -hmm. trek, the, yeah. the, uh, the, the four, four night trek, yeah. Inca Trail. Yeah. Um, you know, that all comes from the Sacred Valley. Mm -hmm. So getting people there, and plus there's just a lot of culture there. Urubamba, mm -hmm. I really thought was a cool town. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the nice little cute cathedral there, uh, but then you also have Ollante Tambo. Um, Three nights is really not out of the question if people have that much time to spend. Absolutely. I mean, it was just a lovely place to stay. I think that's what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hill and I spent three nights. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely recommend you take a look at the brochure and mm -hmm. see all the options that you can view mm -hmm. from Cusco or Sacred Valley. There's so many different day tours. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've talked about Cusco here and then the Sacred Valley, uh, going into the Sacred Valley here. Uh, this Peroria station is a little, seems a little bit off to me, <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, that's the the station outside of the the rail station outside of Cusco that your clients are if they want to do the the longer here of here of being, right? Um, yeah, out of Peroria. Yeah. But most of the trains go back and forth between Oyanta Station, Oyanta short for Oyanta Tambo, yeah, and Aguas Calientes. Correct. So, um, you know, we're, your clients are staying here in the Sacred Valley uh, for two nights, maybe even three if you can convince them, uh, and then going to Yantatambo Station and then going out to Aguas Calientes or Machu Picchu Town. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the Inca Trail. You've done the Inca Trail recently. Mm -hmm. Was it last fall? Well, September. Yeah. Wasn't easy, was it? It's definitely not <laughs> easy. <laughs> worth every second. <laughs> there you go. Worth every second. But there is the Salkan Thai as well. Yeah, there's uh, you also for a lot of the people who don't have the time, there's the Inca Express option, yeah. um, which is just a, a single day where you can walk through the Sun Gate, which is a yeah. pretty spectacular view when you arrive up there. But it's but a big climb up. It is. And, <laughs> and please remember, for any of our tracks, nobody is arriving at the Sun Gate for sunrise. So just, right. just keep that in mind. <laughs> and I might mention that um, there are no permits for the Inca Trail. The government issues permits for the Inca Trail and we're into October now. Yeah. They're sold out. So think of 2018 yeah. for, for that. Right. <laughs> so maybe talking a little bit uh, about um, getting clients uh, to Machu Picchu uh, Amena, from the Sacred Valley? Yeah, it's 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 very easy to to want if you stay in Machu in the Sacred Valley besides the altitude um, acclimatization advantage like Lee says you are closer to Machu Picchu and yes you definitely don't have to take the super super early trains from Poroi all the way to Machu Picchu the same day and you can do that um, from the Ollanta or Ollanta Itambo station and it takes an hour and a half approximately an hour 45 minutes from Ollanta to Machu Picchu and then once you are in, in well not Machu Picchu because you deboard the the, the, the the train and you get you are in a town that's called Aguascalientes and basically from there you'll be picked up and taken in a bus up to Machu Picchu itself and then you can start off your tour um, so it's a shorter way just being in the Sacred Valley before mm -hmm. And this is one of the pictures, looks like uh, um, uh, Ollante Tambo ruins, mm -hmm. yep. I'm yeah, mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it, it is, and Ollante Tambo itself is a charming little town yeah. um, with lots of places to eat and lots of shops, most definitely. It's a great mm -hmm. you know, Spanish colonial architecture. But getting to Machu Picchu uh, and um, 
is is easy. Uh, and then you know minimum number minimum night is one night. I think you can mm -hmm. do two. I mean, you could up in Angus Calientes. I think having two visits to Machu Picchu mm -hmm. is a priority. I mean, that that is the icon. That's the destination of why you're going to Peru most of the time. Um, so you absolutely want the opportunity to go the first day. Um, you'll have a guide. He'll explain all the ruins, the history behind it. And then the following day, you'll have kind of an opportunity for a bit more of an independent excursion where you're going to take the bus up on your own time. You can wander around. You'll have an entrance. And you get to experience it from a different perspective because Machu Picchu does have a little bit of a circuit where you're going from spot to spot and learning about each place. Yeah. It's nice to have the independence to wander off on your own. Yeah. There are so many little sidetracks. Even though it is, yes, very crowded and very popular, you can find little nooks and crannies within the, the sanctuary where you can find some privacy. And doing that on your own is, is a really good option that yeah. next day beyond just the climate factor because I've been there a couple of times where the first day I'm there in the afternoon, it's cloudy. See that big peak right there at <laughs> Wainu Pichu? You can't even see it sometimes. It's so foggy. Yeah. And so getting there in the morning the next day, clear my sky, it just gives you a better opportunity. Yeah, a couple of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you can get up or earliest in the morning. You can get up and they, can, they bus to start going at 6 a.m. The bus to start going at 5.30. 5 the park opens at 6. Yeah. But on the first day you arrive uh, there, around, you arrive in Aguas Calientes about 10 o'clock, you have the tour of Machu Picchu, which is about two hours, then you have lunch, then you have the afternoon at leisure to wander around. The last buses go down at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The buses start at 5.30 in the morning, the park opens at 6. Uh, usually we don't take people back to Cusco by way of train and minivan until about you know, 3.30 yeah. or thereabouts. Yeah. There's plenty of time to visit. Absolutely. And sunrise at Machu Picchu, you know, <laughs> everyone, you know, thinks the sun's going to, to be rising when they you go get, up at 6 o'clock. No. So often it's clouded over. Yeah. Did you see yeah. sunrise? Uh, no, no, so I didn't get up that early. Better. On one on one trip, actually, yeah. pre the buses, we you can walk up. There's these switchback roads where the buses go up, but there's a trail. You didn't walk. Not up. exactly a beautiful trail. You're no, just walking across the road and then going up. It's a tough road. But I did do that once for the pre sunrise, and uh, you know, I I don't want to set expectations yes. <laughs> poorly, but it was a wonderful experience that time. I happened to be very lucky and get a good sunrise experience it's, it's, up there. It's kind of a cloud for it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's right at the edge of the jungle, so it has jungle-like quality. So quickly, uh, we got two options here as far as the Belmont Andean Explorer. This is going from Cusco to uh, Puno and then Ar Arequipa. Yep. This is a new yes. program. Yes. To oh, good. This is brand new. Oh, this is brand new. Um, Belmond um, used to have a train that went from Cusco City to the to the to Lake Titicaca in one day, and it was eleven hours. And you you basically slept at a hotel once you got to Lake Titicaca, and then the following morning you would do. Um, one of your excursions. However, this has changed um, a few months ago. There are two ways, well, three ways of getting from Cusco to Lake Titicaca. Actually, those three ways are offered by Avanti. The first one is going by bus. The second one is going by plane. It's about a 35, 40 minute flight. And then the third one was going um, by train. Now, these train experiences have been reloaded to say it some way. There's four experiences that Belmont is offering right now. It's pretty amazing. The first one is is this one that's showed in this picture, which is the Peruvian Highlands. Um, it departs every Thursday at 11 a.m. from Cusco City, and it takes you to um, Lake Titicaca, and then you get to stay um, on board the train for the night, and then you do the, the Uros and Tequile um, program, which is inside of the lake for the day, and then you go back into the train, and then you go to Arequipa where you actually do have a visit to Arequipa that is included in this and then you can extend somewhere else in Arequipa like the Colca Canyon if somebody wants to. <laughs> So that's yeah. three days and two nights. And then there's on um, there's the one that's the reverse way that goes from Arequipa to to Cusco um, 
and so you can choose to do that as well just flying from Lima to Arequipa and then doing Arequipa to Lake Titicaca and finishing up in, in Cusco if, if you want to do that. Um, the one thing to mention is that you would have to fly back, if you're doing this, you would have to fly back from Arequipa to Lima to take your international flight, which is as well a very short, an hour, 45 minute flight. And then this one here is one day, one night. Um, so this is the Spirit of the Water, it's how it's called, or Spirit of the Andes, which is going from Cusco to Lake Titicaca or from Lake Titicaca back to Cusco. Now both ways include an overnight stay now that the trains have been upgraded to sleeper trains. Um, and it includes all of these stops and the visits inside of the Uros Islands with the Belmont people. So mm -hmm. that's what it is, and it's pretty nice that it includes Arequipa now, so yeah, that's, so that it's is exciting. Cool. Is, it yeah. operating? is it operating right now? Uh, it's or? operating right now. It's operating right now, yes. Good, good. Um, and then talking about uh, Puno or, or Lake Titicaca, you know, the Uros uh, Reed Islands up there at the top and some uh, ruins uh, down at the bottom, um, you know, there's a lot to see and do. Uh, it's the highest Niagara Lake in, in um, the, the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's historic. It's a, They consider it the cultural heartland of, of, uh, of Peru and, and as well as Bolivia with the Ayamara culture there, uh, which is a pre Inca culture, uh, still very much alive as well. Uh, but so the big draws, we big draws. Yeah, I think we covered them right here, these two pictures. <laughs> the Uros and Tequil. We don't have the opening uh, with the arch there of, of no, looking out no. onto uh, Lake Titicaca, but it is, uh, it's high up, it's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. part of the Altiplano. And, uh, and then this wonderful Reed Islands. There are, as you can see, they have some solar. They don't just have generators, they have solar power now as well. <laughs> good, good, good transition. Yeah. So it is a you know there is a certain level of of, of touristicness about this, yeah. uh, but at the same token, it's still pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, but uh, going out to Tequil is is an amazing experience mm -hmm. as well. I think part of it beyond the the cultural experience, which is unique and interesting, is just the natural beauty that's out there. You got the yeah. incredibly high altitude lake. Um, and you're surrounded by, you know, this mountain range, and it's just, it's, it's yeah. a gorgeous area. It really is. True. Yeah. Now, remember, the altitude is very high, though, even higher than Cusco. It is. Mm -hmm. It's like almost 14,000 feet. Yes. And you definitely feel it. But yeah. some of the, I had my favorite hike was actually here. Um, yeah, but again, no. you're going to Cusco before. And if you follow Lee's instructions, you'll be going to the Sacred Valley before that. So there's yeah. good chance to acclimatize before really getting into the higher part of your trip, which is the lake. Because yeah. Lake Titicaca is the be, highest lake. Yeah. yeah, once you make it through three nights in Cusco, you're, you're, you're good. Fine. You're good. <laughs> Two nights in the valley and you're fine. You know, for, for most, most people. people. Most I mean, people, it's yeah, very yeah. individual. Yeah, it's true. Very, very. Always think about that. Yeah. And then... Uh, we got a little bit of uh, information as far as ICA is concerned, um, and well, Alaska, what, what, yeah. Alaska. Yeah. yeah, that whole area. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a, a new route that will let him in and talk a little more about it, but uh, you know that allows you to fly from Paracas to to Cusco either way, and so you can do either a pre your Machu Picchu experience or a post your Machu Picchu experience and do the Nazca overflight to uh, something as well as the Bayesas Islands. Mm -hmm. It's an area that. Uh, you know, people have heard of Nazca, but not too many people make the effort to go there. Now they've made the connection easier, and uh, if you give us a call, we can we can simplify your itinerary for you with these new routes. You want to talk about uh, the Nazca overflight a little bit, uh, Emma? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the past, to do the overflight of the Nazca lines, you would have to go all the way to the Nazca area, which is about seven hours away from Lima, so that was a little bit far for one to do, you know, the overflight. But now, um, you can do the overflight to from Pisco, and as you can see in this light, from Lima to Pisco by bus, it's four hours, by private car, it's a little bit less from that, 
and you get to go to the Pisco Airport and, and take the flight from there and it's an hour and 45 minute flight that takes you to Nazca, does the overflight and then brings you back to Pisco. Um, and it's very safe, um, and 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 we we highly recommend it. And and not only there's the NASCA um, flight to do in this area, but now there's a number of things to do. In this picture, you can see um, part of the desert and the boogie rides that you can do there. There's this um, the Huacachina, um oasis in the desert there. There's also a number of things to do. This area is very popular for Pisco tasting um, and Ica is only an hour away from, from Paracas or Pisco area. There's a number of important hotels, um, a Starwood property, a Hilton property, right by the water. So, so there's really a, a number of things to do. And the, the, the Nazca Lines, it's, it's a very big thing to do in Peru, only four hours from Lima. Very popular. And, and um, so, uh, you know, you mentioned it just briefly, uh, Michael, and, and Baestas is kind of, you know, Peru's answer to the Galapagos to a degree. Uh, lots of, uh, <laughs> yeah, lesser, but, but still impressive. Yeah, sea lions. Yeah, sea lions and, and lots of different Rainbow. types of birds. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a you know definitely an area that people can go to spend a, we can have a, you can spend a night uh, nearby and get go out to Mayos. It's an hour. Hour yeah. was an hour away. Okay. Yeah. Most yeah. Of the time you stay in Paraguay. Mm -hmm. In Paraguay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but in a two night you know pre excursion you can do the Nazca overflight and Ballestas. Um and what is great is that we have multiple options. You have a shared option which is one where you're going on the bus between Lima. Um, and that's going to save you a little bit of money. And then, of course, we have uh, the more intimate experience. We have a private driver as well. We bump, bump up the co cost of it, but someone's going to be with you throughout, and uh, you know, there's going to be a guide along the way with you, and makes it a little simpler as well. More personalized, mm -hmm. definitely. And we talked about what's the big draw in this area, yeah. and everybody says the Nazca lines, and this is one of the images uh, uh, from that. Um, Amen. How how large are the planes that are used for the Nazca overflight? They're twelve seaters. Yeah. Twelve seaters. And how long are they actually uh, passing over the the Nazca lines? You said an hour and a half from Pisco, but that's not the entire time spent going over the Nazca. Lines. You're you're in the plane in the plane for an hour and forty five minutes. You overfly for 45 minutes, and it takes about 30 minutes from Pisco to get there and back. So it's a good 45 minutes that you're flying over these lines, and this is one of the things that fascinates me. We still Peruvians are studying these lines. There's a number of theories around them that you know you would have to come and check it out and make your your own hypothesis about it because it's a really cool thing. Speaking of which, they can't, you know, uh, you, travel agents uh, traveling with Avanti do get 20% off. Uh, so just so you know, uh, explore further. So there's, uh, we talked about some special options. So five nights stay in 2017, you see a free shared Lima tour. Yeah, part of it is, uh, you know, getting people to, to stay in Lima a little bit longer. It's a great opportunity where you're going to go see all the historical town, and then you'll be around the, the uh, San Isidro, see some of the museums we talk about as well, mm -hmm. and see the, the Park of Love, Angela Flores. So if you stay with us, uh, you know, for the rest of the year, except for July and August, where we have a separate offer, you get a Lima City Tour, as well as uh, you're, you're going to get a free entrance to Machu Picchu. So some nice value-add perks here, mm -hmm. benefits. Now, in the month of July, um, we're celebrating uh, the U.S. independence by providing just a, a free folklore show and dinner, either in Cusco or Lima. So even for those people who, who end up skipping over Lima, they'll get a benefit for booking them in, in yeah. July. Yeah. Cool, cool. And a big thank you. Uh, so this is how you can get a hold of us. I'm just going to keep this up there as we get to some of the questions. Um, and the, you know, the, the question always is, will this webinar be recorded? Yes, it's being recorded right now, and uh, we'll be sending out links to the webinar afterwards, whether you attended, you can share with your colleagues, or uh, if, you, if uh, someone, one of your colleagues didn't attend but signed up, uh, we'll uh, be sending that out to them uh, as well. So tell your friends. 
Tell your friends. <laughs> That's correct. Lots of good information. Um, so, you know, we always have, we kind of covered it to a degree, but, you know, when is the wet season and when is the dry season? Uh, you know, there's a, a fair amount of, of uh, uh, you know, questions in that regard. But, you know, the rainy season is December, January, February, March. You can tell right now March is <laughs> kind of in the middle of it, even though it should be towards the end of the rainy season right now. They're, they're feeling it because of some of the unique weather patterns. Uh, April. Yeah. 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 So once once you get through April, then it tends to be dry. So May through November. You know, that's, yeah. and that's yeah. the great thing about uh, Peru, and in, in essence, is why it's so great for families, uh, is they can you know, you get summer vacations, and it's a, a prime time to travel there. But I will say, having traveled there in November, it's cooler, mm -hmm. uh, but still very comfortable, yeah. uh, and uh, absolutely had a lovely time. One of the examples, just to, for the climate, is you could tell the Inca Trail is actually close for maintenance and also because of the weather in, in February. And so that's up near the, the Cusco region as well. So that's really kind of the heart of the heavy rainy season. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, when we're uh, talking about the, you know, the, the permit to the Inca Trail to uh, Machu Picchu, um, you know, it, that, that's a, that cost is it's included in the package Absolutely. that we yeah. sell um, and that's yeah. that's available you know online as yeah. well as our brochure mm -hmm. it's a it's a from number so something to always think about uh, but um, you know I think the best thing in, in trying to, to you know, combine all these places is if you have any you know major questions that uh, we didn't answer today mm -hmm. you know give us a call and and we'll be able to put it to all together for you. And that's combined as well as combining the Galapagos. We had a couple of questions here: is you know when's the best time to do it? Uh, and, and any time of year is the best time to do it. There's a, a variety. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Absolutely. And that combination is you know all all year round. Yeah, I mean the ships in the Galapagos do dry dock different times of year because there are benefits to going throughout the year. And connecting it with Peru is is pretty easy to do any time of year. There's not a specific um, I, I would say maybe January, February isn't perfect because a little bit of rainy season, but you could even do it then without a problem. And I would allow two nights. If you're coming from Peru to do the Galapagos, mm -hmm. I would I would allow two nights in um, Quito or Guayaquil just to buffer. You don't want to, you know, run the risk of a flight not going out. Yeah. Missing the Galapagos could be yeah. Yeah. that. That, that ship is going out whether or not you're yeah. on it, so <laughs> give yourself a little bit of leeway. <laughs> there are not a lot of flights out to the Galapagos. <laughs> nope, nope, there are not. And um, so suggestions for, um, you know, maybe how people can deal with altitude. Uh, there's a couple of questions here in that regard. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the medication, but it has become more popular. My, my dad brought it with us, and... And I actually used it one day because in Cusco I had a bit of a dehydration, a headache, and tried to drink water, and it helped. Um, it's the little know, tablets with the powder. It is. Well, they've uh, got it's got uh, everything. It's got coca mm -hmm. leaves. It's got uh, uh, ginger, yep. and uh, gosh, well, there's another plant there that's local that's really good for your stomach as well. Absolutely, that's helpful. But, the coca yeah. tea is another thing that you could do. But in general, you know, calling us to I logistically set it up so you're acclimating appropriately, that's the best way to do it. Santa yeah. Valley, Cusco, Puno, you know, step by step going up to the higher altitude rather than jumping to, let's say, fly Lima to Puno and, and start out there. You might hit it a little harder. And it also affects everybody differently, mm -hmm. and it affects you differently based on each experience. Exactly. I've had times where I had zero nausea, zero yeah. headache, Me and this too. last time I had a little bit of a headache. So, you know, just be prepared, and that's why I give yourself maybe an extra day or two. Anything you want to add to that, Jimena? Yeah, well, the one thing I would like to add is definitely is um, try to have time when you arrive to rest and not just go directly to any activity. I think that's yeah. key to it. And not eating a huge, well, you would want to eat a huge meal the night before <laughs> flying into, into Cusco, but just try to keep it light just for, for one day, and then you'll be yeah. perfectly fine. Well, if you food so good anyway, you want to stock yourself before you get there. <laughs> but watch the welcome pizza go sour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and probably a little on the alcohol. That, right. that, that is a key component here to avoid any of that uh, those counter effects. Yeah, yeah. And there's also uh, ginger, jengibre. 
uh, which is uh, fantastic for altitude. Just put it in the water and, and drink it all day. And stay hydrated, number one. Uh, don't yeah, drink we'll too stay much. hydrated. Yeah, yeah. Don't drink too much, too many Pisco Sours until you're acclimated. Then just, you know, have, have at it. But <laughs> be careful for the first few days. Trust me, I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, with that, anything, any last words, anything you guys think that uh, we might have missed? I mean, we did miss a lot. We can't share everything. So let's be maybe a little bit realistic. But. Well, we, we, you know, we still recommend the flow of one night in Lima, uh, two nights in the Sacred Valley, one night Machu Picchu, two nights Cusco, and then, you know, who knows? Add Puno. Yeah, add Puno or Puerto Maldonado. I mean, there's just so much to do and see. Yeah. You know, I, have, I don't like to see people rush off to, you know, the Galapagos because there's so much to mm -hmm. see in, in Peru and there's so much to see in Ecuador, too. That's that, true. Uh, you know, people do that. So. Yeah. And we can help you out. Yeah. Making, connecting mm -hmm. all those things in the, in the timeliest of ways is uh, what Lee and her team do every day. And, you know, Michael's job is to make sure that we have all the products to support that. Absolutely. <laughs> and then go to the destinations and make sure that it's all good. Absolutely. <laughs> Havana? Michael? Yeah. <laughs> Just Hi, sorry. I was, I, was, I, was I was cut off. I'm no back. Just stop muting yourself, Havana. <laughs> yeah, I'm any just last words? doing it itself. <laughs> any, any last words, Havana? Well, just just again, you know, about the floods and all of that you're probably hearing in the news. Um, just, you know, it's 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 not that bad. Um, still, we, we were, we're going to help that area and all that, but the touristic destinations are not being affected whatsoever. So just keep being great ambassadors of Peru and... Um, I mean, Avanti is our top client in the States, and we put amazing programs with them. So, so, so help us um, share that information, basically. I would like to add that uh, one of the questions I repeatedly um, get is, um, where, do we, where do we meet our uh, transfer person, and, and how do we recognize that person? Well, Condor Travel is a very professional, very, very professional company, and they have a, a, a uniform. And, uh, and on the first slide there, we actually had uh, somebody wearing that kind of uh, maroon uniform that says Condor. They could be holding a sign up. Tan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maroon accent. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and it, it is pretty easy. Certain airports are more difficult than others throughout the world, you know, and we get certain complaints in some places more than others. In general, Lima is very easy. You walk out of the customs area, and you are going to be seeing your person right there. With their um, name on exactly. the side. Exactly. Yeah. I'm holding a sign yeah. for you. It's going to be very clear. We do not have that many issues. Uh, there are other airports that are a bit more complicated. Uh, the only last thing that I want to add to it real quick is just Bruce kind of logistically complex, and that's why we do a good job for you here, trying to get from, let's say, the Sacred Valley to the Oyente Tambo Station, Work your way up to Aguas Calientes and Machu Picchu. Well, what do you do with your bags? Trying Someone trying to do that on their own is not an easy thing to do. And the combination between us and our, our local suppliers, we got your back. And, and it's going to be seamless. It's going to be smooth. And uh, honestly, it's, it's worth every penny to try to get exactly. something set up beforehand in Peru. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No. A must. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never planned a vacation before, and I did this time. <laughs> no, it, it is one of those places, even for the backpackers of the world, um, it's, it's, it's difficult to do without help. I met too many people who were stuck in various places throughout, and it's very deep. So anyway, go ahead. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, uh, you got a lot of great information. It was one of my favorite Peru webinars we did. Covered a lot of ground. I uh, gave you a lot of good information. This is recorded. We'll get it up online and get it out to you as well. Uh, but, um, you know, stay tuned. There's plenty of other uh, webinars coming up. And uh, you know, sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already, and we'll, you'll get uh, advised of when those are going to be happening. So uh, thanks a bunch, and I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.